what is going on guys? Well, week 12 was certainly something else. The San Francisco 49ers were informed they can't play at Levi Stadium anymore. The Denver Broncos couldn't use any of their quarterbacks. And the Steelers Ravens game only got pushed back like a million times. With all that said, let's see where all 32 NFL teams stack up against one another as we head into some December football. Number 32, New York Jets. Previously 32nd. Nothing new to see here. The Trevor Lawrence sweepstakes is theirs to lose. We feel bad for Sam Darnold, but he clearly isn't the answer a quarterback. There just isn't any progress to speak of in 2020. The season can't end soon enough for the Jets. Number 31, Jacksonville Jaguars. Previously 31st. GM David Caldwell was fired after Jacksonville fell to 1-10 on the season. A fresh start in the front office was long overdue. Unlike the Jets, the Jaguars have been quite competitive in some games. They nearly upset the playoff-bound Cleveland Browns in Week 12, but just couldn't finish it. The Jaguars are the Jets' only serious challenger for the number one selection at this point. Number 30, Cincinnati Bengals. Previously 30th. Give them credit for staying competitive against the suddenly surging New York Giants. But you are what your record says you are, and the Bengals have lost three in a row, and six of their last seven. Number 29, Dallas Cowboys. Previously 27. Just shameful. After a feel-good road win against the Minnesota Vikings, the Cowboys fail to show up in a must-win home game on Thanksgiving. Dak Prescott's price tag continues to go way up with every Dallas loss. And did Jerry and Steven Jones ever botch this one? Number 28, Los Angeles Chargers. Previously 29th. This is getting hard to watch, even for non-Chargers fans. Another 300-yard performance by Justin Herbert completely wasted by mind-numbing penalties, turnovers, and breakdowns on defense. Really, this team is way too talented to be 3-8. Anthony Lynn seems like a really good dude, but it's just hard to envision the Chargers keeping him and his staff beyond the season. Number 27, Detroit Lions. Previously 23rd. Goodbye, Matt Patricia and Bob Quinn. It took a blowout home loss to the Houston Texans on Thanksgiving to give Lions fans the long overdue chance they've wanted for a long time now. The Lions blew some big time opportunities to hang around in the NFC playoff race. Now their biggest focus will be to find a new capable head coach and GM. Number 26, Carolina Panthers. Previously 22nd. The 4-8 record is disappointing, but the Panthers have been keeping it real close against elite teams. Yes, their defense unraveled again in Sunday's road loss to the Vikings, but at least Carolina is staying in these contests. Clearly, they're only a few pieces away from seriously contending. Number 25, Philadelphia Eagles. Previously 25th. Yikes, three straight losses for the Eagles, who now sit third in the NFC East. The clock is ticking on their playoff hopes. No easy explanation as to how the most talented team in the division is faltering this much. If they don't win the division, you have to wonder if they'll look to move on from Carson Wentz. Number 24, Denver Broncos. Previously 17th, what could they do? None of their quarterbacks were eligible to play. Denver didn't have a chance, especially against the NFC's top squad in the New Orleans Saints. Kendall Hinton deserves praise and respect for serving as the QB in an impossible situation. Number 23, Atlanta Falcons. Previously 28th. We figured the Falcons would enjoy the spoiler role under Raheem Morris. And there you have it, an absolute shellicking of the Las Vegas Raiders on Sunday, which could seriously affect the AFC playoff picture. All things considered, Morris has done a great job since taking over. He deserves consideration for the head coaching job in 2021. Number 22, Chicago Bears. Previously 18th, five straight losses for the Bears. Just an embarrassing all-around performance at Lambeau Field on Sunday. Barring a strong finish, and we don't see it happening, the Bears will likely open 2021 with a new GM, as well as a new coach and a new starting quarterback. Other than that, all is fine. Number 21, Houston Texans. Previously 24th, Deshaun Watson has played at an MVP level under interim head coach Romeo Cornell. Absolute domination of the Lions on Thursday. He carved them up like a cold turkey. Pardon the uh, Thanksgiving pun. The Texans have nothing to play for but pride at this point. Good to see them go down with the fight. Number 20, Washington football team. Previously 26th. Well then, Washington absolutely demolished the Cowboys on Thanksgiving to stay very much alive in the NFC East Division race. Honestly, we'd say they're the favorites to win it. But the way Alex Smith, Antonio Gibson, and the front seven are playing. Number 19, New York Giants. Previously 21st, the Giants barely avoided a catastrophic loss to the Bengals. But whatever, a win's a win. Gotta love the fight these guys have shown under head coach Joe Judge. Not a lot of talent on the roster, but the guys are clearly buying into a system. Could it result in an unlikely division title? Only time will tell. Number 18, San Francisco 49ers. Previously 19th, a reminder that Kyle Shanahan remains one of the NFL's best head coaches. With the second string quarterback, the 49ers went on the road and defeated a surging Los Angeles Rams team. Simply amazing. Also a reminder the 49ers will be back in contention once they're healthy again in 2021. Number 17, Las Vegas Raiders. Previously 15th, there it is. 
the inconsistent Derek Carr and his Jekyll and Hyde Raiders. Following a promising 6-3 start, they drop a heartbreaker to the Kansas City Chiefs and then get utterly destroyed by the Falcons a week later. Good luck trying to figure this team out. But if they don't figure their own problems out soon, well, their playoff dreams will unravel quickly. Number 16, Minnesota Vikings. Previously 16th, the Vikings barely pulled off a thrilling home win against a slumping Carolina team. But they got the W, so they're still alive and well in the NFC wildcard race. They should have no problem beating Jacksonville this week. After that, a visit to Tampa Bay in Week 14. That game could carry serious playoff implications for both teams. We'll see if the Vikings can keep the momentum going. Number 15, Baltimore Ravens. Previously 12th, Baltimore season is on thin ice now. Nobody is blaming them for losing on the road to the league's best team without their starting QB. But a third straight loss is a third straight loss, and the season could slip away fast if they don't pick it up soon. The good news? Four of their final five opponents have losing records. So there's that. So I got that going for me, which is nice. Number 14, New England Patriots, previously 20th. Don't bury the Patriots just yet. They fought for a tight last second victory against Kyla Murray and the Arizona Cardinals to move to five and six. New England now has wins against four teams with winning records. So yeah, they are still dangerous. Number 13, Arizona Cardinals, previously 11th. Their playoff hopes are on ice now. Arizona dropped another close contest. This time to New England, the late game gaps are adding up, and it's clear that the Cardinals aren't ready to join the NFL's elite. Time for Murray and company to get it going again. A tough schedule looms here, and with the Vikings surging, the final NFC playoff spot is not a gimme by any means. Number 12, Tampa Bay Buccaneers, previously 10th. Yes, they fought back and forth to beat Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs, but the Bucs have now lost three of their last four, all at home, and all against elite opponents too. Tom Brady can put up the fancy stats here and there, but the Bucs aren't the true contenders many expected them to be. The offense has to get in sync, and the secondary has to start doing something against top tier opponents. Otherwise, the offseason darlings will see their dream season end pretty quickly. Number 11, Miami Dolphins, previously 13th. No Tua Tonga Vailoa? No problem. The Dolphins took care of business against the winless Jets, and they're in great position to snag a playoff berth. The AFC East division is very much in play, and at worst, they should earn a wild card spot. Give Brian Flores some Coach of the Year votes. He deserves them. Number 10, Los Angeles Rams. Previously fifth. Oh, uh, Rams. Hello? You defeated the Seattle Seahawks and Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Then you followed up with a home loss to a San Francisco team without a starting quarterback. Yeah. What a wasted opportunity. Goodbye to your hopes at earning a top seed and lone first round buy in the NFC. Just focus on the division now. Number nine, Indianapolis Colts, previously fourth. What a massive letdown that was. Following a thrilling come from behind win against the Green Bay Packers. The Colts got utterly dominated in every phase at home against the Tennessee Titans, who reclaimed the top seed in the AFC South. The Colts needed the Forrest Buckner back and fast. That defense clearly isn't built to thrive without him, especially against the run. Number eight, Cleveland Browns, previously 14th. Major congratulations to the Browns and their fans. For the first time since 2007, Cleveland will finish 500 or better. The streak is over. Long live Kevin Stefanski and the Browns rushing offense. Only three teams in the NFL have more wins than the Browns. That's, that's crazy. Wow. Just an amazing feel good story. And yet it feels like they're not earning enough respect at the moment. Trust us, this is a team that nobody will want to play in the postseason. Number seven, Buffalo Bills. Previously ninth. Big time home win for the Bills coming off their bye week. They move to 8-3 on the year and control their own destiny in the AFC East. But now comes the real challenge. Their final five games are at San Francisco, Pittsburgh, Denver, New England, and Miami. The Bills probably need just two more Ws to clinch a playoff spot, but they'll need three or four in order to seal the division title. Number six, Green Bay Packers, previously seventh. Death taxes and Aaron Rodgers lighting up the Chicago Bears on primetime. It was all too easy for a Green Bay team that rebounded nicely following a frustrating overtime loss to the Colts. If it weren't for Patrick Mahomes, Rodgers would be the MVP frontrunner. Good to see the Packers defense put together a rare quality performance here in 2020. They're still a major threat to steal the NFC's top seed from the Saints. Number five, Seattle Seahawks. Previously sixth, as expected, Seattle took care of business on the road against the Eagles to move to eight and three on the year. The Rams' home loss to San Fran put Seattle back in the driver's seat to win their first division title since 2016. And hey, they can still very much finish as the top seed in the NFC. Number four, Tennessee Titans. Previously eighth, anything you can do, we can do better. The Titans said, probably. Two weeks after getting embarrassed at home by the Colts, the Titans returned the favor by, well, embarrassing the Colts on the road. And so Tennessee is now in the driver's seat to win their first division title since 2008. Side note, how incredible is Derrick Henry? Sorry for thinking he would regress a little bit here in 2020. At this point, we shouldn't count him out for the Offensive Player of the Year honors. Number three, New Orleans Saints, previously third. 
The Saints weren't challenged in the slightest against the Broncos on Sunday. It was all too easy for a surging red-hot defense, and Taysom Hill once again did his job filling in for Drew Brees. The Saints are 2-0 without Brees. They won eight straight games and control their own destiny in the race for the top spot in the NFC. Number two, Kansas City Chiefs. Previously second, Patrick Mahomes vs. Tom Brady Part 4 didn't disappoint in the slightest, but it was Mahomes, the best QB in the NFL right now, who came out on top over the GOAT. Their head-to-head -head series is now even at two apiece. It was a historic afternoon for Mahomes, 37-49 of 49 for 462 yards and three touchdowns. Tyreek Hill single-handedly won a lot of fantasy managers their games with 13 catches for 269 yards and three touchdowns, including the game-clinching catch in the final minute. The Chiefs just keep on rolling, and it's not a stretch to say they're the team to beat as January draws closer. Number one, Pittsburgh Steelers. Previously first, as expected, Pittsburgh got past a Baltimore team that was missing several key players. They are just five wins away from pulling off the second 16-0 season in NFL history, but their upcoming schedule includes games against three playoff contenders in the Bills, Colts, and Browns. Celebrate this week, but there are ways away from accomplishing perfection, and KC is still coming for that top seed in the AFC. What changes would you make to our power rankings? Join me in the comment section below. Make sure to follow myself and TPS on social media. We post great content all the time. Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, YouTube, we're on everything. Go follow, go subscribe. Subscribe to TPS. We post videos every day. Every day is a new video. And like this video, it really helps us out. Just one click down below. You know, that's all you gotta do. Of course, thank you so much for watching. I'm Jason Biondo. I'll see you next time. On my knee.